Hey there, fellows. All right. So today I suggest we experiment with this lovely car's suspension system. We were just paid visit by a few fans, and they brought us these. Here I'm holding a gas cylinder for an office chair. Now we all know how they work. You've got a handle right here, and they can bear quite some load. Like, say, if I were to sit on this, you can barely even compress it. You can really only get it to move a tiny bit. And from there, it just stays extended. Okay, let's pull the lever and bring this back out. Granted, for that you do have to get off the chair. But anyway, let's go ahead and fit four of these gas cylinders to the rear axle, make a suspension that would allow for lifting and dropping the rear end, and having all sorts of fun with it, and go test it. Let's do this. Okay, so the holiday season is over. But for our fan base, we want the holidays to continue. And so we've prepared a new present for you. Everybody who spends a hundred dollars or more in our shop is gonna receive a special little surprise from me personally. It could be a video message for you or a friend, my autograph on a t-shirt or a hoodie, or an autographed postcard. Make sure to specify what you want in the order form. Always in stock we have sick looking hoodies, stylish hats, t-shirts, caps, mugs, stickers, key fobs, as well as accessories for your cars. Plus, we are always cooking up new merch ideas, so treat yourself or someone close to some Garage 54 goodness. Hit the link in the description, spend $100 or more, and get a nice little personalized bonus. Make sure to use the code GARAGE100, good for a solid discount. We make an adjustable suspension using office chair gas cylinders, translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so look here. This is what we've cooked up. Here we have the gas cylinders, it's all looking good. We put a couple of them on each side. Okay, now let me explain what all of this is for. The rear axle of a car has obviously got some movement to it, right? It does this sort of dance left, right, and we need something to compensate for it. You can't just weld these straight on. Here's the solution we came up with. You can clearly see what's going on. Didn't even need to chop anything. So these right here are some steering tie rods. Tie rod ends, I mean. I mean, they're basically ball joints that have plenty of movement. They should keep these from breaking off, with them having a bit of movement to them. Right, so that we've covered very good. And so now, with all of the welding done, it's the moment of truth. Let's bring the car down and see how much weight these can carry. Shall we give it a try? This would be the real moment of truth. Keep lowering it. I can see them compressing. Oh, for real? Look at that, they're holding the car. That even increased the ground clearance. It is higher than it was. So look at this. Oh wow, it even rebounds. Cool. Push down on that side. It works. We did have to sacrifice four chairs. It does feel a bit stiff though. And a bit high. Okay, let's bring it down now. Though I doubt you'll be able to pull all four levers at once. Oh, you want to treat them like a piano. Okay, we can give it a try. Let's see if... Mm, not bad. Very good. It's on the deck. Now we just need to keep on... Yeah, now I think it's on the bump stops. What just happened? Something broke off. What would that be? What do you mean? 
Don't worry, we can fix it. Okay, we brought the car down, it's all looking good. Now we need to do some reinforcement, make a single lever for all of the cylinders, so that we can control them from the driver's seat. And then we go for a test drive. All right, here's what's happening. We've got the car off the lift. You know what? These gas cylinders do not seem to make for a soft suspension. I mean... Yeah, it appears to me that these might be a bit too stiff. But on the bright side, they are carrying the load, despite us having used just four of them. Now I am gonna try to break them, but so far I can't really. But here's the really fun part. Right now the rear end is pretty high up. I'd say it's... Almost perfect. Almost. But if we want to bring the car down slightly... We can do this. I've got a lever right here for that. A little bit more. Lifting it requires pulling it again and putting someone lighter behind the wheel. Are you holding it? All right, let's try this. How did that go? Okay, fantastic. Though I might need a bit of help. You pulling it? Put it down? Wow, yeah, that looks so much better. So yeah, we fitted all of that to the car, the system is fully functional. Now we just need to test it on the road. See what the car does. Is it gonna hop like mad? Is it gonna be smooth? Will the suspension even absorb the bumps at all? Let's go for a drive and find out. This Lada is loaded with so much stuff, guys. We've got this handbrake, pneumatic doors, an automatic transmission, I mean... This is such a great car. And on top of that, we now have those trick shock absorbers. Carefully driving out. Wouldn't want something to break off immediately. And we're off. The wheels are spinning. The suspension seems to be working. Granted, these are some tiny bumps. So we're not running the factory shocks. You know, the car does roll around quite a bit. That might be because of the placement. Closer to the center as opposed to the corners. That's something you immediately feel. Okay, flipping around. Time to drive the other way. Okay, awesome. Here we go. That is very stiff, though. Like, seriously. Back in the garage, we were actually squeezing the tires. And now that we've put some air into them, the imperfections in the road are being transmitted straight to the body. I'm not gonna lie, you can really feel it. It's stiff, yeah. I mean, nobody was expecting them to provide the same kind of dampening as the stock springs, given what they're for. On the other hand, it's not as bad as if we'd have welded some pipe in. There's not nearly as much movement of the body. So this... really isn't all that bad, relatively speaking. It's bearable. But then we are driving over snow. Now I'm going over some bigger bumps and the ride just got very harsh. So they do throw you around, for sure. Okay, here we go. I like how this drives with an automatic transmission. 
You press the gas and away it goes on the snow. Well, these shocks seem to work. Though they're definitely not perfect. But then we didn't expect this to be perfect anyway. And while I'm driving slowly, they don't seem to be falling apart yet. I think we should find somebody we could surprise with our setup. Now, while the car is in its highest position, here I am going down the road. This does not feel perfect by any means. But overall, it is quite nice. We are not hitting or scraping on anything. But something tells me that as soon as we bring the car down, things are gonna get a bit difficult. Driving along? Okay, here we go. Now this is pretty harsh. Not gonna lie. Please let me through. Thank you. What is happening back there? Oh, we've lost one of the cylinders. Too bad it couldn't take the punishment. But then it just slipped out from the bracket. No, that's totally normal. I take it you've got some serious machinery in there. Better than yours. Better, you say? Can yours do this? Oh yeah, in true lot of tradition. But lifting it back up... That you have to do manually. Or using a jack. Oh yeah, it's the ghettoest shit ever. Russian style, yeah. We don't look for easy ways. This also has an automatic gearbox. What, you don't believe me? See, it's missing a pedal. You're driving without a spring, do you know that? Let me put it into gear. Is there anyone behind me? No, check this out. See that? That's a Japanese click. Yeah, we also gotta click the rear end. Careful! I don't want that glass to crumble. Oh, wow, it is so stiff with the rear end lying on the bump stops. Whoa, driving on the bump stops is seriously unpleasant. Ah, oh, man, this is so stiff. But what can you do? One of the cylinders I can see is poking out, but oh well. Okay, what gear is that? It just went into third. Okay, this is just too much. With the car on the ground. In this position, they're not providing any dampening whatsoever. With the rear end raised, they were at least doing something. But now they're not doing anything. Okay, that's enough of that. I think it's time to head back. Okay, fellas, after going for a ride, here's what I have to say. It all worked out well, actually. Despite us losing one of the cylinders, I mean one of them popping out from its bracket, the car didn't even slump to one side. It just stayed in the same position. And considering that... I mean, look, these office chair gas cylinders were holding quite a lot of weight. So no false advertising on behalf of the companies that make these chairs. If the salesman or the brochure says that it's able to carry 120 kilograms, well, it appears that they're telling the truth. Or not 120, but instead 180, 150. Anyway, three such cylinders took the weight of the car with no issues. I mean, obviously the rear end weighs somewhat less than the front, but in any case, they do allow you to drive around even. Now, at first it felt as if they were barely doing any dampening. But then later on I brought the car all the way down and, oh, was it shaky lying on the bump stops. So while they were fully extended, they were actually doing something. 
Granted, the ride was still pretty harsh, but there was at least some dampening compared to when the car was on the floor. Now, a real benefit of the system is that you can bring the ride height up. The main drawback is that it needs to be done manually. And this was cool. These office chair gas cylinders work beautifully. You saw it all for yourselves. We don't need to continue the experiment. One time is enough. We had our fun and we should call it now. Okay, fellas, that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.